The game you're seeing on the screen right now is called Click Quest. It was made as a joke by an individual named Christopher Gamble, also known as Fugiman. It's a game where you click. Not on anything in particular, you just click and the game counts how many times you do so. After a certain amount of clicks, the game changes the color of your counter based on what color you chose at the start. I chose blue. And you keep clicking with the objective of getting to level 100. And at the bottom of the screen you can see other players in their click count. The game hasn't been all that popular in the past couple of years, it actually did not work the last time I did the show in a different language. But now it's up and running, maybe on account of Desert Bus being a few weeks away. To the right you even have a chat window, so you can interact with people, form friendships, alliances, discuss things and in general have the same amount of social interaction with other people that you would have in any other MMO. The joke was that you would pay a monthly fee for this game and that it would even have microtransactions to get extra colors. Now I ask you. How is this not the exact same thing as just about every MMO we've ever played? In terms of basic actions and their effects, it's the same thing. You click on a thing, a number goes up, you gain a level, things change color and you keep clicking on a thing while occasionally talking to people in an endless experience grind with no substance, entertainment value or skill required. This isn't just what most MMOs are, but what most single player RPGs have become. In terms of mechanics, they are just this. And when you realize it, it becomes kind of depressing. Which is why it's the game's job to stop you from realizing that you're standing on a chair or a couch clicking until something changes. Sure, it would be better if such games had better gameplay, but for some reason millions of people actually like this. They like the grind, the pointless, useless, mind-numbing, unengaging grind. I'm not judging. I'm just saying that you have no taste in games and you should not be driving the industry into ruin. This script, because back then when I actually wrote scripts I had some time, was made in 2016. I'm happy to say that since then you have driven the industry into ruin. Parts of it. With your loot boxes that you keep spending money on. Back to the point at hand. The illusion that you're not playing a game is important. Important. It's something that a lot of games don't seem to try to maintain that much anymore. Without it, you're just sitting in front of a screen pressing a button for hours and achieving nothing. But with it, you're taking part in an experience that captivates you. The illusion is based on two elements working well enough with each other in order to create one whole. Or one of them being so good that it overcomes the flaws present in the other one. These elements are gameplay and world, which kind of includes everything else. The gameplay route is usually applied to games that focus on mechanics like fighting games, good puzzle games, strategy games, simulators, tycoons, stuff like Kerbal Space Program. Games that have very detailed and intricate systems that you learn and eventually master. When you reach that level, when you are at the peak, when you fully understood how to use the ensemble in your favor, you get a feeling of accomplishment. And if it's a multiplayer game, you've effectively become a god among your peers. There is value in that. You feel your time wasn't wasted, it wasn't for nothing. You're captivated by the gameplay to the point where you forget that you're playing just a game. That you're interacting with a screen using some plastic peripheral sitting down and basically accomplishing nothing useful for both you and the human race. But that doesn't matter because you're tackling a challenge, you're solving a problem and you're having fun. But when a game has poor mechanics and yet still focuses on them, things go awry. And I'm not talking about bugs, though they can also have a really bad impact on experience. For example, let's take a racing game where the AI is so rubber banded that it's not actually fun to play because no matter how good you become or how bad you play, 
the AI will always be in the exact same place each time. It reminds you that you're not playing against an opponent, you're playing a game, one that's not actually that good. If it was, it would at least try and give the AI some measure of variance to at least make you feel like you're not just playing against something that's glued to you at a certain distance. Or how about a tactical combat game where for no reason the enemy gets an extra turn while it's still your turn. Again, it takes you out of the experience because it reminds you that the game does not respect its own rules. More than that, it reminds you that it has rules and that it is a game. There is no integrity to it to keep the immersion. It becomes just a succession of bullcrap. Crafting a world that makes sense with stories and characters that also make sense is not an easy job either. But some people seem to go out of their way to make something that really doesn't make sense as if they hate you. I'm not talking about making everything realistic, but making things believable. If you establish something, a concept, an idea, motivation, a rule that the world follows, do not break it. Don't do things that make no sense, like having the entire crew of a space station leave for no reason right before it gets attacked, like in Mass Effect 2 just because it was in the script and you ran out of ideas how to actually do it. Or maybe putting a castle in the middle of an active volcano like an Ultima 9 where no one sane would actually put a castle. And it's sometimes the little things that make no sense. Things you'd think people would gloss over but, as it turns out, manage to unravel the entire illusion that this is a world and not just a game. Like how would Edward Kenway from Assassin's Creed 4 know about assassination contracts delivered by pigeons before he ever learns what the assassins actually were. Or again, in that game, why am I sailing to the middle of nowhere to trigger a mission that is taking place in a port halfway around the map? Why am I rescuing the commander in XCOM 2 in the tutorial if I'm already in command of the troops? Who's giving me dark zone credits in the division? Why does every MMO assume that I'm the only person here when there's millions of people playing it? It's even as simple as the game warning you that you're about to go out of bounds or places a giant invisible wall right in your face for no good reason. It's all just more ludonarrative distance and every time you notice it, every time you are reminded you're playing just a game, it ruins the experience. It's like in a movie when you see the boom arm in the shot. Or there's a scene in front of a mirror and you see the camera and the crew and the director. You're still watching the movie, but being made aware of that ruins it. In the case of movies, clever cinematography that enhances the experience that keeps the illusion alive that would hide that reflection is rewarded with the immersion of the audience, because the effort is appreciated. You tried to make me feel like this is actually real. If people just go the lazy route and don't care about the details, it breaks the suspension of disbelief that is asked of us every time we watch a movie or play a game. We're supposed to buy into it, believe it, feel it, and when the illusion breaks, it ruins it all. Then when it happens, you realize you're just playing Click Quest or Cookie Clicker. You're standing in front of a screen, doing nothing productive. Making a game that constantly maintains the illusion that it's not a game isn't impossible. It just takes planning and actually taking into consideration how everything works. It's actually baffling that sometimes games that are not really all that good made huge efforts to keep the illusion alive, like XCOM The Bureau a dreadful game in which one of the main gameplay elements is that you take command of your squad from the pause screen. That mechanic is not only explained but is a core part of the story. And that just blew my mind because it's not a good game and yet it had that, it had that commitment to being cohesive, to putting something that would normally just be oh that's a game thing into the context of its world and making it real for its context. And yet other games don't seem to give a damn about it. I'm still pissed that Diablo 3 calculates spell damage, skill damage, 
based on your weapon. How? If I'm throwing fireballs at people, I want them to be fireballs, not extensions of the giant two-handed axe that I as a sorceress somehow wield, because it being sharper makes the fireball hotter. It doesn't even take advanced technology. Games like Ultima Underworld were absolutely looked in their immersion back before 3D graphics were even fully fleshed out. But now, when you've got studios with 5,000 people spread out throughout the entire world and seemingly no actual unifying creative vision, it does seem a little unlikely that the illusion will be that common in video games to come. One great example, quite recent, is the way that the loot box crates appear in Call of Duty World War II. You know, in this game about soldiers fighting the good fight against tyranny, against evil, an homage to those who sacrificed their lives in the name of liberty, of freedom, of humanity. You get loot crates falling out of the sky right on the battlefield with those floating cards revealing themselves and giving you a special reward. Sure, it's in multiplayer, but man, really? Which is incredibly sad because some of the best games are those that you lose yourself in, not the ones that forcibly kick you out every five minutes. And just because some people don't notice the elements that take you out of the game, it doesn't mean that they're not there. They just don't have any standards. Like the millions of people going to see a really, really bad movie and saying it's great. That still won't give the Transformers movies an Oscar for directing or Twilight one for acting or screenplay. And you do notice them. It may take time, but you do notice them. And they drive you nuts over time. They make you create videos about them. Twice. Just so everybody understands it. And you hope in vain that something will change. Well, things do change. I mean, I've said before that we are living in a time where game development is actually doing quite well. Not in the AAA scene. The AAA scene is dead. It's now just about shoveling very well-marketed garbage down everybody's throat and filling it with loot boxes, microtransactions of every kind, DLC and exclusive offers and promotions with mountain goats and whatever Ritos you're eating right now and game fuel and stuff. But the people who actually make games on account of they like making games, they still care about these ideas and they do put in the effort, even though they don't have the budget to do it properly or the attention that should be given to them. So give them the attention. Go play something not published by EA, Rockstar, Activision or Ubisoft or Microsoft or Sony or pretty much any big company. Expand your horizons and never look back until they actually start improving things, which they probably won't. Goodbye.